Hello everyone, this is Javamunk, and welcome to a brand new series that I'm going to start featuring a mod called the Universe Mod. Now, you've probably never heard of the Universe Mod. Why? Because I am actually the creator of this mod. So, this feat, this series is not going to be dedicated to surviving in the mod, but it's actually going to be me creating this mod. It is still a work in progress. Things are still broken in this. There are still things that can be added and that I want to add and that you guys can add. More on how you can help with this mod in a later part in later in the video. But for now, I would like to show you all of the things that are in this mod at the moment. So I've been working on this mod for the last three years. So it's been broken and fixed and file shattered and broken for the last three years. But, and kind of on and off work, but here we are. We have all sorts of new blocks and items. We have cool blocks, neat items. We got more food, three new dimensions and a, a bunch of holes caused by supermassive explosions. So, let's do a quick little, not, probably not going to be very quick because there's a lot in here, but we'll do a summary on all of the things in this mod. It should be noted here that we are in update 1.8, so we don't have cool new 1.9 technology and Wow, what a thunderstorm. Well, I guess this kind of brings me to one of the blocks that I added. Different toggle, different weather and time toggling blocks. So here we have the moon block, which if you right click it, it sets it to night. Also works if you power it with redstone. The sun block, which does the same thing except it sets it to day. And the rain block, which will change it from from sunny to rainy or thundering it chooses randomly between rainy and thundering and it's toggled just by either right clicking or powering it so pretty cool we also have blocks of pure color now i made i made these blocks about six months ago and I am aware that in the 1.12 update, the concrete blocks, which are very, very similar to these blocks of pure color, but there are some key differences. First off, these are in no way related to sand and gravel. They don't fall, they, they don't have any properties of concrete whatsoever, other than the fact that they are a block and they're broken with the pickaxe. Secondly, these blocks of pure color are the purest of the pure. So, so you know how when you when you're selecting a block, you can see a black outline around, and you can use it to count. Well, the black blocks you can't count on it. Can you see the black the black boundary? I didn't think so either. So that's the power of the black blocks. They are the blackest black. The white blocks are the whitest white, and Red is really, really, really bright. Right, so those are the blocks of pure color. They work kind of like concrete, but they are even more pure in color, and they are in no way related to concrete. Also, they have absolutely no change in texture. As you can see from that black block, if there was even the slightest change in the color of the texture, then you'd be able to notice how many blocks there were in a group. Mm. But for me placing that black platform, you couldn't tell. So I lined up these blocks of pure color with wool and stained clay. So there you go. Those are the blocks of pure color and the toggling blocks. These toggling blocks are currently unobtainable and uncraftable in survival mode. And that is intentional because these blocks are pretty powerful. 
As for the blocks of pure color, you craft them with dyes. So, if for example, I get some orange dye here, then you can craft up these blocks of pure color. As you can see, orange dye crafted into orange blocks. So, that's how you craft these. Now, as for the white blocks, again, this is update 1.8, so, and I made these before update 1.10 came out, so I had no idea that bone blocks were invented, and currently, there are no bone blocks in this update, but in the future, once this mod gets updated to 1.10, they're going, these white blocks are, be, are going to be crafted with bone blocks instead. Now, at the moment, all of these are craftable, except for the blue block. So, I've been kind of playing around with how to craft these, but as you can see here, Lapis Lazuli creates Lapis Lazuli blocks, and Lapis Lazuli blocks turn into normal Lapis. Now, I'm, I'm not exactly sure how, how you're supposed to be able to craft the, the, um, the blue blocks, because I'd like to be able to use it with dyes, but as you can see, it crafts into lapis lazuli blocks. So, I'm not sure. That's one of the things that you guys can decide. So, how should the blue blocks be crafted? They can't be crafted with 9 dyes, even though all the others are. In this mod, there is also a decrafting table, which currently does not do anything. So, one of the new weapons that are added in this mod is crafted using Tesla coils. So, I will show you what it is once I craft it. You craft a Tesla coil by putting two comparators on these corners here, two repeaters here, three redstone down the middle here, and then put a water bucket and a lava bucket. That gives that gets you a Tesla coil, and you get the buckets back. And it's raining again, but no it's not. So, let me craft another one of these, because you're going to need two Tesla coils in order to make this weapon. Alright, got the buckets. You need two Tesla coils and a stick. Gets you the Lightning Sword, and it also gives you the achievement called God of Thunder. So, this Lightning Sword, it strikes lightning, just like that. Kind of fun to play around with, but now I would I would ordinarily have it where you right click on right click on a block to actually strike the lightning, but unfortunately it doesn't really work. I'm not sure why. It's nothing I did, but essentially if you right click on a block, it creates this ghost. So normally you can hear the lightning like this, but if I right click on a block. It's still striking the lightning, as you can see um, on the screen, but for whatever reason, it's like ghost lightning. I'm not sure why. Alright, so that is the lightning sword. In this mod, there are two kind of specialized blocks. So, there is the ender pearl block, which is used to make this portal to this to one of the new dimensions and it also should be a way to store massive amounts of ender pearls but unfortunately they currently can't craft back into nine ender pearls i'm not sure why but that's something to be fixed there's another one that you craft like this kind of in a heart shape there and then fill in the rest of it with red blocks pink blocks and red blocks makes the block of love so perfect valentine's gift you place it down, and it creates these hot particles all over the place. How adorable. So, that is the two specialized blocks, right here. There is also the banana block. Currently, no bananas, but that's to be added. And also, they, they go in a jungle. They're going to be spawning in a jungle. You will find oil as some... As some of the blocks in that you can find as ore, so you can find those underground in large veins, 
and when you mine them, you get these oil items. Oil works as a fuel, which can smelt 2 stacks and 22 items with just one piece of oil. So, pretty cool. But, as you can see through this Plastic Maker 6000, they can also make the toughest material ever created. So, say I put some oil in here, like that. What you have to do is you smelt, you smelt the oil, and you, you essentially have to smelt the oil three times. So they turn into, that turns into oil stage one, which smelts into, here it goes, which smelts into oil stage two, which once that smelts, it smelts into oil stage three, and it's the oil stage three that smelts into plastic. So there we go, it is currently an oil stage three. And yes, it is powered by oil, which turns into plastic. So plastic can be used to make tools, and at the moment, it doesn't have armor, really. But the tools are very, very durable. They are the most durable, durable material. In fact, there is an achievement for that. Let me show you. Toughest in the world when you obtain plastic. So that is plastic. As for here, there are blocks to store massive amounts of different crops. So you know how hay bales can store wheat? Well, now there's a carrot block, potato block, and blocks for other plants that I created to populate the world. So among these plants are radishes, beetroots, yes I know, they are in update 1.9, but this is 1.8, these will eventually go away, tomatoes, turnips, cauliflower, and lettuce. So these will spawn kind of like this grass seed does, and if you break it, you will get two of these. Now they are currently non-renewable, and if you eat one, it only fills up half a hunger bar. As for the block variants of them, they look kind of weird, and in the inventory they have transparency parts. Now I'm really not sure what is causing this here, the potatoes and the carrots, this really weird side texture. I have absolutely no idea. So, yeah, those are the foods. So, there are actually other kinds of food that are currently not craftable, but will be soon. There's the bowl of macaroni and cheese and the bucket of macaroni and cheese. So these will be crafted with macaroni and cheese. So the bowl variant fills up five hunger bars and the bucket of mac, mac and cheese, it not only fills up 10 hunger bars, but also it gives you regeneration. So let me just demonstrate. I'll go into survival and give myself hunger for about five seconds, level 200. There we go. Now we are starving and we need to eat. So, bowl of mac and cheese it fills up two and a half hunger bars. It's five actual hunger in the game. So, bowl doesn't really do much, but the bucket fills up the full hunger, and it gives you a generation 4 for about 11 seconds, for about 10 seconds. So, that is the bucket and the bowl of mac and cheese. To make macaroni and cheese, here are the materials that you will need. You will need a lot of wheat. So, there you go, we have wheat. So let's make the macaroni first. There you go, you, you make turn the wheat like that, and you get a bunch of macaroni. You will also need specifically yellow cheese. It doesn't really work with any other kind of cheese. So there you go. Now, what you need first is a bowl. So let me get a bowl. There we go. And you put the macaroni like that, 
and the cheese like that, or the other way around, and it gets you the bowl of macaroni and cheese. So I showed you what the bowl of macaroni and cheese can do, but you can upgrade it if you add in a golden apple. So you take the bowl of macaroni and cheese, you do the same thing with your with your cheese and macaroni, but you also have to add in a golden apple. Now, I made a mistake there. You actually need two macaroni and three cheese. So the bowl of macaroni and cheese actually has more cheese. And there you go. You got your bowl, your bucket of mac and cheese. So the golden apple is required for this to for the bowl, to craft the bowl of not the bowl, the bucket of macaroni and cheese because as I showed you, it gives you regeneration level four. So that's how they keep it all fair. So, oh, and in case you are wondering, yes, I do have a sense of humor. In fact, you can find you can find that sense of humor if you craft six bread, you get a lettuce, a turnip, and a beetroot. In that order, you get the pun sandwich. So let us turn up the beet. Yep, that is an actual thing in the mod. There are also different colors of milk. So you can make that by taking your blocks of pure color and surrounding milk with it. And you get this kind of lime green milk, for example, and kind of looks like radioactive ooze. At the moment, it doesn't really do anything. So I do want it to function kind of the same way that milk currently does. For example, say I give myself, what should I give myself? Say I give myself speed for something like that. Well, first off, I have to be hungry in order to actually have it work. So give me hunger. That should make me nice and hungry, just like that. Okay. And now if I give myself some other effect, then the milk does clear away the effect, but it doesn't do it very well. And I'm starving. Yeah. Things need fixing. And pretty quickly. So, what else? We have all the different colors of milk. We also have different colors of cheese. So that's pretty co quite cool. We have turkey and raw turkey. So in case you're wondering that this w that this mod doesn't have any new mobs, you will be wrong. Meet the turkey, a re a retextured version, retextured very stupid version of a chicken. So it just flaps its wings, and if I the spawn egg looks like this, and it won't be able to save itself from falls. After all, turkeys don't fly. And if you kill them, they drop feathers and the raw turkey, which you can see right here. It's just chicken. Uh, just looks like chicken for now. And you can smelt it into cooked turkey. And they have the same effects as normal chicken. So there are also different colors of cheese, as you can see here. So those of you who are fans of blue cheese, there you go. You have blue cheese in this mod. So black cheese kind of looks burnt. Uh, brown cheese kind of looks like poo. The yellow cheese looks kind of normal. So then orange cheese kind of looks like it's on fire. So to make this cheese, you need to smelt whatever color of milk that you want and it turns into the color of the cheese that was the original color of the milk. Now notice the bucket that was holding that milk is consumed. That is a massive bug that I have no idea how to fix. So if you want something like the gray cheese, you smelt the light gray milk. All right. So for your choice of pickaxes, you have the following things. So, let's test the diamond pickaxe first. Again, this is unenchanted, so 
pretty fast. The obsidian pickaxe. It's just as fast as the diamond pickaxe, but it has a lot of durability. So the diamond pickaxe has 1500 durability, but the obsidian one has 2000 durability. So even though it's just as fast as the diamond pickaxe, it has a lot more durability. Now, so the plastic pickaxe, it is the the absolutely most the most durable, except for the most powerful pickaxe, the super duper pickaxe. But it its mining speed is complete crap. So let me just show you. Yeah, it doesn't mine very quickly, but it has thirty thousand durability. So that's pretty crazy. The technetium pickaxe. It breaks ever so slightly faster than the obsidian pickaxe. Periodic pickaxe goes even faster. And then the unbeatable super duper pickaxe. It breaks pretty quickly. And again, this is unenchanted. With the shovels, it's kind of the same story. So, so there's your diamond shovel. Your plastic shovel is crap. But it has 16,000 durability. So that, the pickaxe actually has more durability than any of the other tools. The obsidian shovel, let me go again with the diamond one. Obsidian shovel, same speed. Periodic shovel, a little bit faster. There is no technetium variant of it, but the super duper shovel, once again, unbeatable, instamine. So I haven't really covered the, the abilities of the periodic and super duper set. The periodic set has the shovel at least has 2000 20000 durability. Super duper has 60000 durability. So pretty cool there. And as for the pickaxe, let me just show you here. The pickaxe, the super duper pickaxe has also 60,000 durability. So the super duper set doesn't range, doesn't vary itself in durabilities. And with the axe, it's pretty much the same story. There's not, not really a point in showing you. So now that I showed you all the pickaxes, shovels, and axes, I'm going to show you the real stars of the mining show. So they are the hammers. So the hammers are downright awesome. And if you want to see the full glory of these hammers, you run the command stop hammer time slash stop hammer time, which is actually a, a command that was that used to be in the game. So very, very long ago, the explosive hammer doesn't really belong in there. It belongs in the explosive section. So the wooden hammer, it doesn't do too great. So all the hammers, they not only break the block that that you aim at, but they also break surrounding blocks, and you get the blocks for, you get the items for those blocks. So the wooden hammer, as you can see, it breaks one block on each side, and it's only really good for downward staircases because digging straight ahead, you still have to break this block that's in front of you. So a bit annoying, but it's good for staircases. The stone hammer upgrades from that a bit. It breaks a 3x3x3 three by three by three area. The iron hammer is even better than that. It breaks a 5x3x3 three by three by three area. So 3 blocks tall, 3 blocks wide, and 5 blocks long. So if you break a tunnel going this way, it's not very efficient. But if you break one going this way, it is. Now it should be noted that all of the items that you get collects in one spot, so you can just walk straight ahead. And on top of that, they take the durability, they take the durability damage of the blocks they actually broke. The diamond hammer breaks a 5x5x5 five 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 area, and yes, they break pretty much every block. The golden hammer is a bit worse than that. It's actually about the same area as a stone hammer but it just goes a lot faster. The obsidian hammer is even better than that. It breaks a seven by seven by seven area. So there you go. That's the obsidian hammer. The anvil hammer, which is actually a suggestion for my little brother. 
it breaks the same area as an iron hammer. So, pretty cool there. Now, let's get to the big boys here. And my inventory is full. Just shows you what happens when you mine for a long time. So, we have the technetium hammer, which breaks a fairly large area. It's a 9x9x9 area, although it does leave some blocks behind. The periodic hammer is even better than that. It breaks an 11x11x11 area. So, and it intentionally leaves these blocks behind here. So if you want to, if you want to not completely lag out the server, then you can mine like this. And as you can see, it just slices away at the terrain. Bam. And yes, you will take fall damage if you use it, if you use it wrong. And it also takes a ton of durability damage. But now, let's bring in the super duper hammer. So, the super duper hammer is downright deadly. Deadly in a pretty crazy way. So, the super duper tools in general, they are actually capable of breaking bedrock. And... So the super duper hammer is able to break bedrock, but indirectly. So let me just show you. Yeah, that is a huge area. And that's a lot of lag. Yeah. So tons and tons of area dug, in, dug out with one swing of the hammer. So I can hear lava below me. And I'm pretty close to bedrock level. So... Let's dig down. Oh, there we go. And yes, it does also break the the lava source blocks. Okay, so lots and lots of lag later. Let's break a hole into the void. There. It just broke bedrock. So, yeah, the super duper hammer is ridiculously powerful. And because of that, it is, it is a, obtainable in survival mode, but the process to obtain it is ridiculously difficult for that reason. Because the these hammers, especially the super duper one, is absolutely crazy. The fact that it can break bedrock is insane. So if you're actually using it to mine, then you can you have two choices. You can either be careful with it, or go absolutely nuts and die in the void several hundred thousand times per day. It's a lot of fun. So, that is all the hammers. Pretty crazy things. So I mentioned that the super duper pickaxe and hammer can break bedrock. They can also break end portal frames. Now, they can't do it directly, as you can see here. Not even the hammer can do it. So, currently the super duper pickaxe can't do it, but I can demonstrate how to how to break bedrock and the end portal frames with the super duper hammer. So the way you do it is that you have to transform these blocks into something that you can break. So I added these blocks called break that are essentially breakable versions. And as you saw there, I right clicked on the end portal frame and it transformed into this weird thing which is breakable end portal frames. You do the same thing with bedrock. See? As you can see, test environment mod, breakable bedrock on the right hand screen there. So, now that they are breakable, you can actually break them using pretty much whatever blocks you want. But, unfortunately, there's this really weird bug in the game where you can't actually, where when you right click on a block, it doesn't actually do anything, which is quite disappointing. One thing I should note here is that once the block is in its breakable form, like this, it is actually mineable with any tool, including tools that are not super duper pickaxes. So, but only the super duper tools can actually transform these blocks into something that you can break. So, yeah. And once I get that bug fixed with where you right click and it turns into a ghost block. Once that is fixed, you will actually be able to obtain 
the bedrock and end portal frames. So you will be able to place in end portals wherever you want and not just in strongholds. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, so there are also different types of glass which currently don't work like they're supposed to. So I'll just tell them what they're supposed to do. Explosion proof glass is about the one that actually works like it is supposed to. It works pretty much like transparent obsidian. So if you want to watch a huge explosion from far away, or well, if you just want to watch a huge explosion, you can put yourself right next to the explosive whatever it is, and you won't get hurt by the explosion. So it is essentially transparent TNT, or transparent obsidian. Pretty cool. Flammable glass is neither glass nor is it flammable, but it is supposed to be. So as you can see with this beacon, it is not transparent. Glow-in-the-dark glass. It, could, it is supposed to emit light, but it currently does not. And you can see this best if I switch it to night. So as you can see, it does not emit any light. Opaque glass. It is supposed to be technically transparent, but visually opaque. That's why it's called opaque glass. Despite it being an oxymoron, at the moment it just acts opaque. Not like opaque glass, but it sounds like glass. Fool's glass, on the other hand, is supposed to be visual. Is supposed to be visually transparent, but technically not. So, it is. It currently functions like glass, but you just can't see through it. There are two other kinds of glass that are extremely explosive, and so I will not show it in this section, nor on this island. But they do function like glass. I'm not going to put it on that beacon because I'm really afraid of setting it off. You will see why in the section on explosives. But this temporary block here, it is an extremely useful tool, especially for creative mode. It is currently unobtainable in survival mode. But so in creative mode, say you're trying to count along how long this piece of grass is. Now, normally it's really annoying because then because you can count off with some other block and then you have to destroy all the blocks. But not with the temporary block. You place all the blocks and they create this really tiny explosion. So, very, very small explosion. It barely destroys, barely destroys dirt. But they are also extremely prone to explosions. They have pretty much no explosion damage no explosion kind of uh, resistance. So the teeny tiny explosion is enough to set off a chain reaction here where you can do that. So although it's not very useful for for measuring out things in dirt, it is useful for measuring it, it's essentially like a creative mode measuring tape. And the reason it's here is because when you're in creative mode, Breaking block, the speed of breaking blocks doesn't really matter, but the the ability to just do that is really quite cool. Because that way, once you're done measuring, it's essentially like retracting the measuring tape. Pretty cool. I might add this into the survival. I might make it obtainable in survival mode, but that is up to you guys to decide on how or how it should be obtained in survival. Well, on to the section of explosives. So, the explosives are really what destroyed this this particular island. And if you think this island is destroyed, <laughs> you haven't seen anything yet. So, these explosives range from minor to insane. So insane that I have to keep it out of my hot or else I might act, I might destroy the whole world. So we have in in ranking in explosion damage, you have the explosive hammer at the bottom and nuclear glass at the top, plus the complete destruction gun. But these three are obtainable in survival mode. You also have the hyper knockback gun, which I can just demonstrate over here if an animal would be so kind to show me. See ya! Yeah, pretty crazy knockback. 
So, nothing too exciting there. So the explosive hammer. I will. It's one. Of, it's one of those things that doesn't work too great in. Doesn't work too great. Even, so even though you are able to. To um. To right click a block directly like this. First off, it doesn't make any noise, and secondly, ghost locks. Extremely annoying. But you can blow things up with it by looking away from a block. So like this, boom. It destroyed a eh, kind of a small area. It's about as weak as TNT, normal TNT. In fact, it's weaker than that. So what it's really useful for is transportation. So if you want to go truly rocket powered, here's how to do it. That's pretty rocket powered to me. That's propulsion. Now currently you're only able to move in one direction. I'm not sure why that is, but yeah. So, yeah, I did kill an Ender Dragon here. So, this island is where I've been doing a lot of the explosion testing. And this, it's more of a continent, but man, it is destroyed. So, let me find a spot that isn't completely wrecked by the explosions. Like here. Right, so, perfect place to demonstrate how powerful the explosive hammer is. Not very powerful. If you compare that to TNT, just regular, um, not nuclear glass, TNT, yeah, standard average Joe TNT, then it's a bit weaker than your standard average Joe TNT. So that's the explosive hammer. Now, explosive glass is insanely powerful. It's much more powerful than TNT or the explosive hammer. So, you get. Um, yeah, this, this terrain is kind of broken. So, let's blow it up. So, explosive glass is active. The explosive and nuclear glass is activated <clears throat> by right clicking on it or if something nearby it explodes. So, if say I have two pieces of explosive glass, as soon as I right click it, both will explode at the same time. As you can see there. And the explosion, the explosions multiply together. So, say I wanted to make sure that I destroy this island. Like, I hate this island a lot. It's ugly. It's got these banana blocks that aren't supposed to even be spawning here. You got decrafting tables spawning in random places that aren't supposed to be there. Yeah. I really don't like this island. Goodbye. Um. I don't know. Was there an island? Was there an island here? Sure can't tell now. So, you thought the explosive glass was powerful. Uh, wait until you see the nuclear glass. Now, nuclear glass is so powerful that it has such a powerful explosion, it will actually destroy water blocks and lava blocks. So, uh, I think I'm going to destroy this part of the island with just one piece of nuclear glass. And it works the same way as the explosive glass does, but be super careful with this. It is extremely explosive. As you can see now. Yeah, that's a pretty big explosion. So if you really want to multiply the effect, you can stack them up like this. And my PC is kind of powerful, is somewhat powerful, so it could probably handle this. As soon as it actually renders the explosion. Woo, there it goes. There it goes. Yeah, that's a pretty big hole. Yep. 
powerful stuff. So, yeah, you got nuclear glass and explosive glass. So, now that you have that, let's get to the part that has the most blocks and items in it. The reason that this mod has crashed so many times, like the files corrupted, and the thing that I need the most help on, and also the thing that I spent the most time on. Let's see what it is. So here is the periodic table of elements. 118 items. Items, ores, and blocks. One for every single element of the periodic table. Except for mercury and bromine. Those two are the only two liquids because scientifically speaking, they are the only liquids at room temperature. They are very buggy. And the gases over here have a have the item version, and they also have the canister version, in, in, rather than the block version. Now, some of these here are radioactive, and radioactive things at the moment create insanely high explosions. So let me just grab something like uh, actinium, and let's go over here. This is where all these holes came from, by the way. So, the way you set off these explosions here is, first off, make sure you're very far away from all the other explosions over there. And then, oh yeah, okay, looks like actinium doesn't explode, but I know uranium does. So the blocks have a lot more powerful explosions than the ores do, but they both do explode. So all you have to do to activate them is by is break them. That is all you have to do. Now some of these, some of these are a bit insane, like Oganesson. So, there's that, there we go. The larger the element number, and, oh and some of them also give poison or the wither effect. So, the thing about these is that uh, some of the explosions are so powerful that they can actually break water or lava. and let me just show you here. So we have water here, and let's see. There you go. It just blew up the water source. Same thing can happen with lava. So let me just go way out here and spill some lava. And then let's go Kapuri. There we go. So, yes, water and lava do have blast resistance, but none of these are powerful enough to break obsidian or bedrock. Thank goodness. If they did, it would probably crash the, crash the game, because that would also mean that it would create a massive crater in the world. But there we go. The periodic table of elements. This is what I need the most help on with textures, because each of these have a default texture, so, at the moment, things like Californium just use the just use the regular aluminum ingot, and the item item versions just have the just have a glass bottle. So do the canisters, and the blocks are just textured as iron blocks. So, I'm going to update this periodic table as new textures are added. In fact, every video I'm going to add and add to this table here. And now, let's return to the modding test world, so I can show you how you can contribute. So, that is all I have currently to show you for this mod. Now, most of this is very broken, such as these dimensions. I'm, I'm not even going to enter them, because they're so broken. But, we will dedicate entire episodes to them. So, each episode, we're going to update some of these textures here. And also, we're also going to fix a couple bugs and add some new features. So, things like the hammers, make them more efficient. I got, got tons of plans for that. Now, here is how you can contribute. In the description, there's going to be a Google Drive. Uh, a link to my Java Monks Goodies Google Drive. You don't even have to have a Google account to access it. But... Here is how you can help. All you have to do 
is go in there and fill out whatever part of the form best fits you. If you're good at textures, great! Upload a texture. There's a, there's a form in that for you. If you're good at cutting, wonderful. Give me some, show me some code. If you are good at something else like providing ideas, good. Go ahead. If you're good at structure making, then I'm all ears. Send it into the, send it into the form. There's different forms for each of those. Now, here's the real exciting bit. When you, when you upload something to that Google Drive or provide an idea, make sure that you also provide your in-game name. This way, I can pull up your skin and build a structure or build build your statue right here. So, and in the process, I'll also add one of these counters and press a, press a button here every time that you make a texture, structure, or help in some way. I don't have that because in, because in my case, it, my counter would be in the thousands. So, and that, that's kind of cheating. So, here we go. We have a head start here with Snoodle Boy with 18 textures. So, each of you can help in various ways, depending on which form you fill out. You can always fill out multiple forms or fill them out multiple times. Up to you. Just make sure that the, that the textures have the following requirements. They must be 16 by 16 pixels. Also, the images that you upload must be in a PNG format. If they're not, I will delete them. And and also ask you to upload, to re-upload if necessary. Also, they must be family friendly. I will also delete delete those that are not family friendly, but you guys won't be able to access the textures that others will see outside of being able to access the ones in game. And even if I swap out a texture, I will not decrease your, your score. So, so even if you even if a new texture comes in that is better than a previous one, no problem. Your contribution is still going to be public. So, that is it for this for this year. Please contribute. Please help me, and in whatever way you seem you deem fit, and whatever way you are best at. And I will see you next episode to, to start off this exciting mod making series.